Seventh Sunday of Ordinary Time, we will now begin the Mass. This is the day, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice, let us rejoice and be glad. Seven Sunday of ordinary time and we are welcoming you here in this holy celebration of the Holy Eucharist. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. We all say, I confess to Almighty God. <clears throat> and what I failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Mary, all the angels and the saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpassed the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayers does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it, he built a watchtower and hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for a crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done? Why, when I looked for a crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now, I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. To take away its, its hedge, give it to grazing, break through its wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but see bloodshed, for justice, but heart the outcry. The word of the Lord. One 
Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this fine and protect what your right hand has planted. The Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. The Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life and we will call upon your name. O Lord God of hosts, restore us. If your face shine upon us, then we shall be saved. The A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to the tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, 
he sent his servant to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again he sent another servants, more numerous than the first ones, by, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has, has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruits. The Gospel of the Lord. Again, good morning, everyone. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, on this Sunday we are called to reflect carefully on the words of the Lord in the Scriptures as we heard of the Lord speaking to us through the passages relating to us the narrative of a vineyard and how this is a metaphor used to describe our lives in this world and what the Lord expects from us as His followers. In our first reading today, we heard from the book of the prophet Isaiah in which the Lord spoke of his people and comparing them to his vineyard and spoke how he had cared very well for the vineyard, tended to it, and did everything he could, referring to how he had cared for the Israelites and then the people of Judah up to the time of Isaiah. And yet, despite all this, the people continued to disobey God's laws and commandments and chose to embrace wicked ways and worship the pagan gods and idols. This is why the Lord was displeased at his people who had disregarded his teaching and commandments and did what were wicked and evil in his sight. That was why God proclaimed through Isaiah what would come to happen to the people who have disobeyed and rebelled against him, as it would soon come to happen that the kingdom of Judah and the city of Jerusalem were to be destroyed by the Babylonians. Its people brought it to exile, and its lands laid dormant for many decades, just as the Lord said it would be. The Lord then reminds us yet again through the gospel today, in which he used the parable of the vineyard and the wicked tenants in order to bring forth his points across to those who were listening to him. As many of them would have been familiar with the terms he used, as many were involved in the agriculture, and vineyards were common in the region at that time. Through this parable of the vineyard, again the Lord showed himself as the owner of the vineyard, which represents the world just as in our first reading. It represents the kingdom of Israel and Judah, and all of us are, in fact, the tenants in the vineyard, working in the vineyard of the Lord. God has called on us to heed his words that we may understand our faults and come to, be, and come to embrace his ways. It is notable that while in our first reading, the sins of the people of Israel and Judah were represented by the bad and rotten grapes. In the gospel today, we heard the parallel in the wicked tenants that occupied the vineyard and refused to give what they owed the master and owner of the vineyard. All of this happened despite the kindness and patience showed by the owner, just as God had been patient in taking care of his vineyard and patiently hope for the good grapes, only to gain bad and rotten grapes in the end. Through the parable, the Lord in fact called on His people to turn away from their sinful ways. 
their wickedness and rebellion, their refusal to obey the law and will of God. In the parable, the vineyard owner sent many servants to remind them all to pay their dues to the owner. But those wicked tenants were greedy and haughty, refusing to obey the owner and thinking of their least property as their own. And therefore, they mistreated those servants sent to them, and in time, even tortured and killed them. And we heard how the owner then sent his own son to persuade the wicked tenants, hoping that they would at least respect him and listen to him and turn to the right path. On the contrary, those wicked tenants became even more greedy and haughty, plotting to seize the control over the vineyard by eliminating the son of the owner, the rightful heir of the vineyard, so that they could claim their rented lands as their own. Thus their pride and greed had led them even further down the path of sin. This parable is in fact a prefigurement and premonition of what was to come. The servants sent by the owner to remind the wicked tenants were the prophets and the messengers. Although some God has sent to remind us all mankind to turn away from our sins and to be reconciled with him. Unfortunately, for a long time, our predecessors had refused to listen to God, remain in sin, and persecuted those prophets and messengers who had been sent to them to remind them and call them back towards God. And when the Lord sent His Messiah, the long-awaited Savior, into this world, just as the son of the owner was sent into the vineyard, the people to whom He had been sent to refuse to accept Him either, and they persecuted the Messiah and His followers, that is Christ and his believers, the disciples and the Christian faithful. Those who were in power like many among the Pharisees, the Sadducees and the members of the Sanhedrin or the Jewish High Council rejected the Lord as they were more concerned in maintaining and retaining their prestigious places in the community. They would choose to reject God and his truth and instead holding on to their flawed ways and beliefs in their rigid and unbending and even hypocritical application and exercise of their authority and law of God. As a result, many among the followers of Christ suffered in the early days of the church because of this opposition against the Lord and His good works. And many more were to suffer from the persecution from the other pagan people, from the Greeks and the Romans, many of whom saw the Christian faith as a threat to their own faith and society. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as we listen to the words of the scriptures and reflect on its meaning and truth, we are all reminded that all of us as Christians have been entrusted by God with this world as our own vineyard, the place of our labor. God has planted the seeds of faith among us in this world and by this effort of our holy and dedicated predecessors, the apostles and their successors, they had nurtured and allowed those seeds to germinate and grow. As a result, we see how the church had persevered and even grown in the past two millennia. That even the most brutal and toughest of persecution, and that even division disagreements, disunity and conflicts, threats from both internal and external sources were able to destroy the church. The one holy Catholic and apostolic church has been established by God to be his kingdom in his world. His vineyard in which all of us, his faithful and beloved ones, are part of and cared for by him. But we must then now uh, also realize that all this did not happen just overnight, but due to the commitment and hardships endured by our predecessors, many of whom suffered and were even martyred for their faith. And remember, brothers and sisters in Christ, that through our baptism, as we have become part of the church, we have also been entrusted with the same mission that the Lord had entrusted to his apostles, which is the Great Commission. He said to all of them, Go forth to all the peoples of all the nations and make them my disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And through these words, the Lord had sent us all to be his laborers, the workers in his vineyard, the church of God in this world. There are still many out there who are still ignorant of God's truth and love, 
and there are many more still even within the church who have forgotten their faith and became lukewarm in how they live as Christians, treating their faith as merely a formality. And therefore, through these readings we heard today, as we heard the Lord lamenting the state of His people's lukewarmness and rejection towards Him, let us all respond to His call in becoming faithful witnesses of our Christian faith, living a true Christian disciples in every moment of our lives. Are we willing to pick up our crosses faithfully and be exemplary in how we live our faith? In each and every moment of our lives, this is what we have been called to do. And as we enter into the month of October, we enter into the month of mission, which began just a few days ago with the celebration of Feast of St. Teresa Plesieu, the little flower of Carmel. St. Teresa Plesieu is famous of her little way in which she said that no amount of effort no matter how small, is insignificant in the effort for the conversion of souls and the glorification of God. If we think that we are incapable, not knowledgeable enough in our faith, or that we have not been exemplary in our faith, then this is where we need to heed these words of St. Therese of Lejeune in striving to do our best to serve God and glorify His name. And we do not need to worry about anything. For truly, as St. Paul Pei said in our second reading today, in this epistle to the Ephesians, Philippians, that we do not need to be anxious about anything. And instead, we ought to focus our attention to the Lord Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And we are called to be exemplary in faith and life, to fill ourselves with everything that is good and just shunning sinfulness and the weakness of this world. Let us all not fall into the temptation of pride and greed, the allures of worldly pleasures and satisfactions, as those wicked tenants had represented to us. Instead, let us all strive to be ever more humble, to be ever more dedicated in faith, each and every day of our lives, to glorify God by our every little deeds and actions. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us all commit ourselves anew from now on with renewed seal and spirit to walk faithfully in God's path and nurture the faith in our communities, in our families, and among our secular friends in all that encounters we have in life. Let us all be beacons of God's light, truth, and hope in our darkened world today. Especially these days when there are just so much suffering, pain, and injustices in this world in the midst of still raging pandemic, which exposed both the best and the worst of humanity. We should bear witnesses to God's love and show His love to one another in these difficult and trying moments. My dear friends, I visited a lot of my friends. Just want to let them know that I am here for them. And they would bring me around their house and in their gardens. To my surprise, there are a lot of plants that they are taking care of. I saw the abundance product produced of their hard labor. Because of pandemic, some people would tend to take care of plants to go away with their anxiety and depression. And I saw a lot of produce, lots of produce. And they were happy telling me, Father, look, I have ampalaya, bitter gourd. I have okra. I don't know the English of okra. 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 Tomatoes. And a lot of produce. I was really happy. And they were happy. And I told her, what a good tenant you are. What a good tenant you were. You produce. These are fruits of your labor. My dear friends, how about us? Even though we are in this 
pandemic, we are being called to be fruitful. Like for example, as we listen to the Word of God, as we are sitting right now, allow the Word of God to be planted in our hearts and our minds, that it germinate so that in the future, all of us will bear fruit. Be a good tenant, everyone. Amen. Altogether, we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. Light from light, true God from true God. To just the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the light of the world to come. Amen. Let us turn our hearts to the Lord, offering our needs and our lives. For those who shepherd the faithful, that they always seek God's will, let us pray to the Lord. For government leaders and legislators, that their policies support and strengthen families, let us pray to the Lord. For those burdened by physical and mental illness, that they find courage in God through whom all things are possible. Let us pray to the Lord. For all here present, that their faith and simplicity bring them a deeper understanding of God's reign. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who, recent, who have recently passed to a new life, especially Juliana Cruz, Lourdes Castro de Guzman, Guadalupe Chavez, Tommy Alas, Ninoy Marcos, and Leo Cruz. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are sick and suffering, especially Edgar Willamore, let us pray to the Lord. We pray for the souls of Roger and Gretchen Reed, Richard Joseph Torres, Eileen Dano, Louise King, Irene Bacleon, Ligaya Gonzalez, Philip Ray Estiandak, Renato Estandan. We pray to the Lord. God, our Creator, you have given us salvation. May our prayers and strivings be acceptable as we await your coming. We ask this in the name of Christ our Lord.
Save us, O oh Lord, carry us back. Rouse your power and come. Rescue your people, show us your face. Bring us back, O oh Shepherd of Israel, hear us. Return. brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. Let us pray. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands and through the sacred mysteries, which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, in Him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in His fullness, for though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray.
Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for some announcements. Uh, so first, uh, you must have noticed that there are two additional pens, okay? So um, we are grateful to our brothers and sisters who uh, donated these uh, tents. So we thank uh, Fan Salvador Wong, Ernie Leonzio, Rigan Maluyamut, and Maxwell and Edna Salas. So thank you very much for uh, donating these two tents. tents. Okay, so maybe give them a warm round of applause. Thank you. And um, again, I wish to thank you for your continued uh, uh, support. And of course, your prayers, your financial assistance. And I'd like to inform you that uh, so the um, collection is increasing. And uh, of course, uh, um, still we are in these difficult times. At, uh, at any rate, I thank you for your generosity for continually supporting our parish financially. So keep on supporting. So may give it online. And um, of course, you can mail your envelopes or you can uh, offer them if you are here in the church. So thank you very much and may God continue to bless your generosity reward your hundredfold. So we thank our ministers today. So we thank our cantor, organist, lector, Eucharistic ministers, our ushers, and our, uh, of course, uh, sound system operator, Christian and then Steve, for the live streaming, and of course, our sacristans. So thank you. May we give them all big again. Thank you very much. You still want to stay? You're enjoying. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless us all. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace and love one another. Thanks be to God. Again, thank you very much. Good morning and have a good day, everyone. Thank you, Father. Be safe. Have a blessed Sunday, everyone.